you're listening to the Music Millionaires Radio and Podcast Show, broadcasting internationally on multiple platforms throughout the world. Statements and opinions made by guests on Music Millionaires Radio are not to be considered as endorsed by sponsors or affiliate and networks. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this podcast without the written consent of Music Millionaires is strictly prohibited. Get ready for a day or night filled with information into the music business, your favorite artists, new releases, or production tips or ideas. If there is something we think will help you as a fan or a musician, you'll find it on this show. That includes YouTube tips as well. And I'm your host, SG1, from The Peacemakers. So stay tuned, sit back, and relax, and get ready for this episode. Hello, 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 guys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good night, whatever you are, whatever time frame it is, wherever you are, wanted to just say good something to you, no matter what it may be, and peace and blessings to you guys. Again, I'm SG1 from the Grammy Award winning team, The Peacemakers, and this is Music Millionaires Podcast. This is the audio version of Music Millionaires and Music Millionaires TV, which is a YouTube channel that we run, basically teaching you guys the ins and out of the music business. However, with this podcast, oh, podcast podcast um this is designed basically to delve into things that i can't normally do or touch on in youtube because of the youtube algorithm saying you guys attention span is too short really it says it's like four minutes long and that's a problem especially when i'm trying to talk about all these different things and all these untalked about things that's going on in the music industry and in the entertainment world as a whole guys so this is my opportunity to be able to um, share some things with you guys. So now, now here's the thing. I want to I want to jump right into this, right? But before we do, I'm gonna play a little song by my group Shilu, and it's called Battlefield. It's out right now, and so I want you guys to enjoy it. And again, just a little snippet of it, real quick, so you guys can um, get a feel for it and give me your opinion. My group Shai Lu from the Peacemakers, of course, and uh, that was Battlefield. And you can find that song on uh, Napster, of course, um, Deezer, uh, iTunes, and all of the streaming platforms right now. You can pretty much find it, and you don't necessarily have to download it, but just go and want to show support, just stream it. And um, matter of fact, you know where you can really stream it? Stream it on Napster. I prefer you to use Napster. And if you don't know why I said Napster, then you need to go over to my YouTube channel if you are not already a YouTube subscriber and check out my video on there that who pays the most to stream your music and I think you'll get your answer then. However, I want to jump right in, man. I really want to jump right in because this is sort of like a prediction and it's not necessarily, it hasn't all the... Well, let me say this to you this way. It hasn't necessarily come completely true, but I see it developing and I see where this is going. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it is AI. And so for those of you who are not into technology like I am, I'm really big into technology, guys, contrary to what you guys believe. And even within the standards of my Native American customs and traditions, where a lot of my elders, you know, they they shun technology. They think it's a bad thing. Um, 
because of what it's doing to society and it's making people lazy for lack of a better word um that's the way my elders feel but for me i think it's exciting i think it has and it creates a whole new revolutionary mindset um and and it allows us to be creative and think about all the possibilities that we have now right under our fingertips but if you guys have not been keeping track of google google's a beast man that google's the real goat how about that one and and i mean that literally google's the real goat and, and if you any of you that are awoke you know what i'm talking about but uh, so Google um, released, and it's, it's not as recent, but not too recent enough. But for you guys who don't know, it'll probably be recent for you. Uh, but Google now has introduced and talked about um, their AI. And the AI is basically called, it's, it's Google Assistant, which you know already they already have. They had Google Assistant, and they've had Google Assistant for quite some time now. However, they have made google assistant something beyond just a virtual assistant google assistant now has developed into what they call duo or i think it's duplex or one of the two you guys can google it and find out <laughs> you see that google it and um what it does is it's an ai that can now make phone calls for you it can set appointments for you but that's not the clincher okay that's 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 not nothing big it is how it makes the phone calls. It is, it is how it enunciates. It is how it interacts while it is making the phone calls for you. And if you haven't heard, here, here's a clip of it right now. Is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you? Let's listen. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Now, now I know you guys are like, what just happened? That was literally their introduction to Google's AI system. And again, it is completely phenomenal. I mean, did you hear the little uh, nuances that it used? Like, um, okay, you know, and the little stutters and crazy, right? So you wouldn't have known that you were talking to an AI. And that's a real problem. That's a real problem for a lot of conspiracy theorists. It's, it, it's, it's really putting the internet world and the uproar for those who really believe that AI is sort of like this Terminator thing, right? You know, where you remember the movie Terminator where Arnold Schwarzenegger and how it originally arrived. And so, of course, in Terminator, you know, the whole um, um, storyline behind it was that, you know, we created artificial intelligence and then that artificial intelligence eventually evolved into something more and, a, and, and attempted to wipe mankind out, right? Um, and then what it did was it created its own sentient beings, um, Terminators, to go back in time and then stop those who were actually fighting it in the future that survived from um, trying to eliminate it <laughs> in the past. And, of course, it has a lot of um, uh, just it's a crazy whole storyline. But I know pretty much everyone has heard of that, that or if not heard about it, you have seen Terminator. But. It leads a lot of people to say and believe that this AI is just the beginning of something like that. Um, because, of course, there's many different forms of AI right now. DeepMind, and it, there's just a complex of different names that have been given to them. But how this plays a part in the music world, you won't believe. And we're going to jump right into that right after this. Just moving ahead with time. Right now, you got the uh, newest technology, which is mp3 mm -hmm. and uh, anybody who's ever seen it actually work cannot honestly believe cd's got a chance in hell in the next five ten years it's it's going to be played out so 
you know, me at this point in my career, it's about me getting ahead of the technology and learning the game. So I set up an internet record label. I think that that's the future of the way people will buy records. And uh, I've been at all these conventions and speaking on it. And as an artist, I just, I'm just aware of it. I think the major record labels don't want us to know or at least want to stagger the whole theory of MP3 till they get a grip on it. Right. And um, one way of doing that is saying people are going to steal the music and things like that. But I, I, I just think that you, you're going to come home, you'll be riding down the street, and you're going to say, oh, Janet Jackson's new album is out. It's number 565. And you go to a special web channel, you'll click 565, and her video will pop on. You click another one, and out come the liner notes. You click purchase, and it'll download to the computer that you're going to have at your house. It's going to hold all this, all your, um, all your music, just like that. It ain't going to be a whole bunch of going to some old tired record store buying a skipping CD. I think DVDs are going to come through the computer just as quick too, the same way they MP3, and they're going to be able to double. Matter of fact, I got the Titanic downloaded to my stoop, my office, the whole movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> so you can do that right now. People are worrying about us moving records around. You can move a film around. And for those who don't know, that was the infamous Ice T predicting the fall of the record labels. And you know what the funny thing about that is, he made that prediction back in 1999. Like he knew what would happen when the MP3 came into existence, and the fear that the record labels had and um, it just goes to show you, you know what I mean if, if you have insight to the music industry and you see the technology and where it's going it's pretty easy to predict what's going to happen and he wasn't wrong he was not wrong you know at that time CDs were still big and being able to buy your CDs out of a, uh, a major chain um, store or a mom and pop store at the time was 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 it you know you was able to do that you know and I think uh, bootlegging was real big at the time, but either way, you was able still to to get that music that you was looking for, even though bootleggers and people like that were starting to evolve into the exact beast that Ice-T was talking about. But I want you guys to pay attention to something pivotal he said. He started an internet-based record label, so he had the insight to know that things were going digital, things would rely on the internet, and so he got ahead of the game. And we're going to be talking about that and why that's so important that he said that as well. And again, I'm your host, SG1, from the Peacemakers and Music Millionaires TV, a YouTube channel that teaches music business tips and much more. And we were just talking about the AI systems that are coming online. Basically, they're coming alive. Uh, and, and that was um, proven by a clip that I just played with Google's new Duo system, which is actually Google's assistant, as they made appointments for their users or their handlers. I don't know what you would call yourself once this happens. I don't know if you, I don't know, you know are you a puppet master? Are you the master? Are you, you know, what? that's another question within itself. What will we be called according to the Google AI? Will we be looked at by the Google AI as a master or as a, a I don't know, uh, you know, are they like our pets now? You know, that, that, oh God, that plays a, that's a whole nother level of thinking. But if you didn't hear, here's a snippet of it I've already played before. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for our client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. The, the, the real question is this, and not even a question. I, I can tell you right now, I foresee the future, guys. 
I can see a future where this is going to go so bad for music producers. And I really mean that. And, and, and what I mean by that, because remember, I don't know if you guys uh, went to my channel and saw this. I did a video a while ago called Humans versus Robots. And in that particular video, I was talking about they had created and were creating a artificial intelligence that would produce music. And it would only take, you know, it, it, it only you basically give it a command and it will create it based on like a childlike uh, understanding. So um, as they was developing this AI, it was making music. But as they noticed the, the the AI would create more and more complex music. Right. And so I was telling you guys, what does that mean for you? So at that time, I was just saying, OK, well, this alleviates record labels and corporations and such who need music from actually using music producers. Right. But much, much more. Let's go deeper than that, because now we're talking about all of the rights that come with music production and song production. So from the standpoint of a producer, you know, where there is a, a you know, 50 percent songwriting, 50 percent composition, and then you're splitting that based on how many people were involved in it. You know, now what happens is that 50 percent that normally would be given to the producer now is wholly owned by the music corporation or the record label. Right. And so that puts such a large spin on things, because, as you know, technology doesn't get worse. It gets better. Right. When it comes to creation and how it's created. And so. With that aspect and that mindset of it, I was just looking at it from the standpoint of music producers. However, when Google released this Google Assistant, this duo, this duplex, and this duplex now have the understanding to be able to hold a conversation with a person and be able to comprehend and understand what's going on and be able to formulate replies and sound human where these people did not know they were talking to an AI. Here comes the problem, guys. Okay, what now stops these AIs from writing music? from singing the music, from rapping, from harmonizing, from all these different things that eventually it will be forced to get into because it's a ever evolving, complex, auto inf artificial intelligence, right? It's eventual. As, as a child grows, a child wants to learn more things. It, it gets into more things. It it grows and it tries at hand at everything, just like us as humans. You know what I mean? We pretty much dabble in everything until we find our niche, right? So what's going to stop this AI from doing that? And what is just going to stop corporations and record labels from doing it where they wholly own now the songwriting, the production, every aspect of it? Now, let me delve into a little deeper, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm borderline conspiracy theory at this moment, okay? But I have to be truthful with you. I have been made aware a long time ago that there was um, software, okay? And this goes hands in hand. This goes hand in hand, so please bear with me. But there is software that literally make human-like faces. Um, they were creating, and, and I don't want to basically you know, go too hard because I don't remember all the information, but there was a corporation or company, and I think it was government-funded that was able to synthesize and create human-like faces and they was creating profile pages on Facebook and other social media platforms and was giving them names and profiles basically and was creating these people. Now, imagine that. Take that part right there and then add the AI's complexity and the AI ability to be able to communicate back and forth and even possibly sing or write songs and then add that to the AI being able to produce music, right? And you join all three of these things now, right? Because we also realize, let, let me add, I just realized this. Let's add the fact that they're, they have, years ago, I don't know if you guys remember this, were able to create a hologram of many different artists like Tupac and the rest, and they literally performed, right? You remember that? Okay, and so at all four of those situations where you create an AI that can verbalize, think, communicate, respond, sound human, you don't know the difference, and an AI that can produce music, and then a, a virtual person that is created, right, 
created literally um made to look real and you think and you add all that along with a holograph so i can produce now this virtual face and make it a holograph who can sing and make music and you never have to see them all i can do is produce music videos on them and never put them in a place or time that people can actually see and and as a matter of fact let me go backwards there's also software and i'm, I'm filling you guys up with so much of this controversy but it's, it's real and it's tangible in the music industry and it's something i want you guys to think about but there is also software that can alleviate images out of videos or photos i can't make this up guys i wish i could make up everything that i just said to you there is software that will take images out and, and why is that so pertinent to you so can you imagine taking a down uh, new york times square picture where there is millions and hundreds of millions of people walking there a day and scrubbing them all out and then um um keying in this virtual holographic person to look like they're singing on the streets of new york and um they're singing this hit song that's now number one on the charts according to billboard and you've never seen this person but let's go one step further taking that same holographic person and maybe putting an actor there right putting someone acting like they're actually interviewing this person and talking to them and again this person doesn't exist at all they are <laughs> a virtual created person who has taken over the music industry these are the possibilities guys and and again i know i'm sounding like a conspiracy theorist but given the information that is given to us right now and how the music industry is changing and how the record labels are not making any money so much so that they are now signing um artists to 360 deals where they're basically taking everything in every way that you can make money you know eventually there will be a revolt eventually we, there will be an uprising and or eventually a person like me will be told to stop teaching you guys how to be independent but it doesn't matter there's too many of us doing it so far and we will continue to do it more than likely so given the fact that as we teach and educate you guys to the music industry and how to become self-sufficient it is eventual it's just eventual that record labels like sony and and you name them man interscope and warner and these movie production companies who are constantly looking for music and they're constantly looking for music to support their films and tv series and networks eventually will be forced to invest into ais that are self-sufficient able to write able to produce they can create a virtual person just to give it that human feel so you know humans have this thing we have to be able to attach ourselves to a person we need to know that person's story we have to feel like we are a part of the moment um and that's a science i've been trying to teach you guys as well that it's not just about your music and the talent of your music and how your music sounds it's actually about you and people chiming into you that make people want to use your music or your backstory so imagine doing all of that and them putting together a backstory for an ai and 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 allowing allowing you to know this backstory and creating this artificial story of this artificially intelligent person and then putting a face to it and a song that's properly written and, and all of the you know the intricacies behind it but imagine you guys being fooled into something like that wow that is that is crazy this is your host sg1 we'll be right back google ai just created a song take a listen to a sample of the first song created in part by google's project magenta Project Magenta comes with the Google Brain Team, and yeah, Google's got a brain team dedicated to deep learning and machine intelligence. Magenta has a couple of goals. One is to build a community of researchers, coders, and artists. The other goal is to advance machine intelligence for music and art. Google released a 90-second piano tune made using Project Magenta. The melody was created by a neural network. That network was given four notes to start. The drum track was added by a more complicated machine called a human being. Google says it doesn't know what to expect from people using its tools. The company likens itself more to a guitar maker, not an artist itself. As far as the song itself, it's not too bad. It doesn't have an amazing hook that'll get stuck in your head all day. It won't be compared to the greatest works of the ages, but come on, it's Project Magenta's first composition. 
I know I wouldn't want my very first creative work published by a giant company. Let's hope the Google Brain team doesn't program the ability for Magenta to have its feelings hurt. If it's something hot you want, then it's something hot you'll get. Yeah, yeah, it's that little chico pit bull, Mr. 305, till I die. Listen live online 24 7, you know what it is. This is Big Snoop DO Double G, and I hope y'all ready for the bombest mother that ever graced the airwaves. All right, guys, we're back, and we were talking about this artificial intelligence that Google created called Google Assistant, which now has evolved to Google Duo or Duplex, and how technology is really, really advancing, and the possibility that, and, and again, I predict that one day soon, one day soon, guys, you all will be witnessing an artificial intelligence that will hit the charts. I am predicting it. Call me on it. It may not happen right now. It may not happen in three years, five years. But I promise you there will be a robot or an artificial intelligence that will create a hit song that will be on the billboards and it will be number one. I promise you. Mark this down. Archive this podcast. It's going to happen. And, and while we was there at the break, right, while I was sitting here thinking, you know what it likens me to think about or what it likens to? I'm not sure you guys remember um the movie simone there was a movie with al pacino that was called simone and al pacino was basically a director who was at rock bottom no one really wanted to work with him actresses and actors didn't want to work with him and so he had this great idea for a movie and a script but no one wanted to star in it no one wanted to be a part of it and so his career was dwindling down so he stumbled across basically for lack of a better word a intelligence or an opportunity to create an actress not just any actress this actress would be the world's best actress this world this uh, this this particular actress will be known as simone and it was short for like simulated uh personality or something of that nature uh, and that's not the exact acronym or breakdown of the the name but simone was created by al pacino and simone became not only a a famous and popular actress but she became a um number one chart topping uh singer as well um singing one of the songs i think she was singing the movie was um uh natural woman and if you're not familiar with that it's now you know that whole you make me feel like a natural woman um song but she did that and so this 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 creation of the ai has me thinking on that lines and level that as I was saying it to you, they've already given you the the thought process. They've already told you that it is possible. I'm willing to bet that they will do this again. I'm willing to bet that they will make another movie similar to Simone to prepare you again for this situation. Because oftentimes you didn't get it the first time. They will come out with something um, to support it later so that you really come to understand what we're trying to push home but i'm willing to t i'm willing to bet guys that within some time again maybe not this year maybe not in the next three years but at some point in time there will be an ai who make a chart topping song and it has to be done because they have something to prove they have to be able to prove that the technology is worth the investment they have to be able to prove that the technology was worth the money and that they can create life that's what it's really about you know what i mean the music gods need to create and when their when their subjects are in revolt you guys right now are revolting right you're you're going against the system you're saying i want to be independent i don't want to sign to a record label no more and i'm sitting here as one of many of the chosen that are supporting that thought process and mindset um, but when the, the gods are no longer satisfied, right, what happens? They just create more people to worship them. So I'm saying to you that the AI will be created to keep that 
momentum going for the music gods to keep them in control and all powerful and saying hey if you guys don't want to play by the rules and you don't like the way we have set the stage for this thing then damn it we're going to make our own artists and we'll make our own producers and our producers will listen to us and we'll be able to control them or will it be much like the frankenstein story where man creates the monster and the monster turns around and then chokes the life out of man who knows we'll see It's going down. The, the question is, how do you all take advantage of this situation? How do you get into the ground floor of this thing and make it work for you before it's too late? And or how do you evolve to be able to um, make that transition or adjustment to be able to combat what's going to happen? See, the key behind anything is always knowing what's going to happen before it happens. That's the advantage you guys have with someone like myself. To know I'm telling you what's going down I'm telling you what's happening you have opportunity now to figure out how you can make this work for you and or how you can change your stuff up okay um, to be able to make that adjustment but I'm telling you this now in advance so that you can have a head start on 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 doing what's right for you as a music producer and or now's the time to capitalize and stop procrastinating about should I go head first or balls deep into this music <laughs> industry you know that procrastination that's making you say well you know i'm gonna make i'm gonna make up a, a thousand beats before i jump in and then i'm gonna offer a catalog all of the excuses that you guys been making now is the time to do it you know because this world is changing and it's, and it's changing around us so quickly that if we aren't careful it'll pass us by now on a better note um, outside of me giving you all this bad news about AI and the potential that it has to take over your music career or your position in the music industry, there is some good things because right now IBM has been working on an AI that actually helps you get your music or your projects done. And if you're not familiar with it, IBM has Watson and Watson, yes, Watson talks, but Watson does a lot more as well. And uh, matter of fact, let me just... Listen to this, check it out. It's becoming harder to find talent in this sea of the internet. I don't want to miss anything. The partnerships where some of the best music gets made wouldn't exist without two people coming together, you know? Being able to make those connections happen, like that's where I win and lose everything. Here at IBM Watson, we are speeding up the discovery of an individual artist. So we're using IBM Watson to shape the way in which producers can find artists through social media. Looking for artists, that's pretty much like probably 50% of my day every day. I never stop working, ever. I'm super excited about her. I love her ambition and what she's trying to do. She plays, she writes everything. She really is an old soul. She's definitely someone I think could be around in you know, 10 or 20 years. So me and her went into the studio and were messing around with ideas. It's not finished yet, but we have an idea of a song called Go. You know, when her started to write the lyrics to the chorus and it started to take shape, it made more and more sense to try and find artists that had more texture to it. We really needed another voice to make the song great. For us here at IBM, what we're doing with Watson is helping Alex to narrow down his search for his next artist. Our main task is to find new avenues so artificial intelligence can see the world in the way in which humans see the world. We're going to be using an artificial intelligence powered search to look through all the emotional data for a huge amount of artists on Spotify and the way they're expressing themselves online. I can input what I'm looking for, what's important to me, what really makes me pay attention to an artist. Watson can take my taste and bring things to my attention that makes sense for me. So basically what they're saying to you is that Watson was able to take a producer and then take not just a producer, match that producer's sound and what he was looking for in his music up with a R&B singer and that was her. And then from there, once her played her part and she, she gave the premise of the song and she laid 
the base of it and, and gave us its foundation was able to match that track that mood that um need up with a rapper and then it chose rhapsody and so well, those to me those top those type things are phenomenal it's phenomenal now now here's a question now you know will these artists work with you or what's the 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 what will be the the supporting mechanism that says this artist would work with you you know why would that artist work with you however when you look at it from the standpoint of what is capable of doing for us finding new producers and or musicians um producers or finding producers songwriters or singers and then finding songwriters and singers producers i think it's a phenomenal thing i think it's a very great concept i think it's a beautiful idea um because it has value um and anything that brings value like that and just the concept of it was just phenomenal when i when i i saw it and i looked up on it it was it was a great technology i think it will be great for producers if you can get past the caveat of will that or would that said musician singer songwriter actually be willing to collaborate with you you know because the way they did it they just curtailed it and was like okay you know it chose her and then her just hopped into the studio with this guy and and you know rhapsody just hopped into the studio with this guy not saying okay these people have all credentials and they're they're already in the industry but I think from the standpoint, if you look at it from the aspect of someone just getting into the industry and you have a powerful um, songwriter and the AI system is scanning the not only the lyrical content of the songwriter, but the vocal skills and range and all the different things. And then it matches that particular artist up with your particular music because it feels like these two things mesh. I think it's a hell of a concept and I think it's really worth looking in, looking at. Excuse me. And I think it will put a new light on the AI thing that to me has not become an issue just yet, but I'm willing to bet that it will eventually at some point in time be a real talked about controversial thing. Um, but I think that the, the IBM Watson matching up producers will offset some of that negativity and eventually allow it to subside. However, what do you guys think? Uh, about this technology tell me what you think you know go over to my youtube channel uh subscribe i will be doing a youtube video on this uh right after this podcast drop and it will be released of course on saturday and we'll be delving into the pros and cons of this as well it'll just be a little shorter than this particular podcast but we will talk about it however i want to thank you guys for tuning in to another podcast i wish this could have been a little bit longer however i really wanted to just point out the advancements that technology is coming forth with and how it could possibly affect you and like always there's so much more i could have talked about and added to this particular subject um but i leave it for your imagination i leave it for you to think about and ponder on and come up with all of the infinite possibilities of an ai creating music and writing a song and having a face and having an identity and becoming a hologram and matching you up with a potential uh, music client and or getting you um, to work with a potential producer or songwriter. All these things I leave to you to think about. And I hope that you do think about it. And like I said, if you've just ran across this podcast um, from the iTunes platform or any of the distribution platforms we use, uh, I hope that you go over to my YouTube channel, Music Millionaires, and subscribe and check out some more pertinent information that I'm giving. All right, this is your man SG1 again from Music Millionaires TV and Music Millionaires Podcast On Demand, and we hope you enjoyed this particular episode. Um, as I always do, I'll end it with basically one simple statement that you all know that I love to say and why I like to say it, which is music is life. We out.